You're currently working as a principal now? Uh, I am what they call it, on secondment from my Like a sabbatical job. type of yeah, yeah, last year and this year. But up to that, I've been working for 26 years in a primary school and 14 of those as a teaching principal. And with this organization, you're paid by the... the Department of Education. Of Education, okay. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to return back to your job? Yes, I am. Yeah. When, when will you do that? Well, I was due to go back next year, but I would probably be the year after. Okay. And what, what's your name? My name? What is your name? Miriam McCabe. Oh, okay. So tell me about, you were telling me. Say, um, Keith would be making the point that teachers in the States come from the bottom 25% of those who go to college. 50% of them go, are in the bottom 25% of their university cohorts. Okay. So a very low level. In other words, if you can't get into any other college, any other college within most state okay. universities, okay. if you pick to the, the education college, you're pretty much assured. Education colleges in the U.S. have essentially become money-making machines because universities need money, and in order to have money, you got to have people, and so. The bottom of the barrel has, I mean, at the end of the line, if you can't get any in any other college or can't figure it out, you'll be accepted. That, that's certainly okay. really that's not the case here. Right. So when I uh, applied for uh, teaching, if you like, it was in this country they have what's called the CAO. Okay, it's a form that you fill out, and on it you put your preference of college course. Now, when I applied for teacher training, as it was called back then. Uh, we had to go through a very rigorous process in order to be accepted into the college. So I do know that for the course that I applied for, there were 800 applicants and they only accepted 100. Wow. Okay. So that was ju just for that particular course mm -hmm. in that particular college in Dublin. Uh, there would be another one equally as sought after in Mary Macklet in Limerick. You'd have, there were two other colleges in Dublin that also were teacher training colleges at the time. Now the numbers they were taking in at the time were quite low and my understanding is that that was because the government didn't want too many teachers coming teachers into the system. Right. So for, uh, I would have sat an English interview, so an interview with three people. Mm -hmm. and you know basically about where, where I was coming from what I thought teaching was going to be about that sort of thing and what I understood about the education system I would have had uh, a, an interview through Irish as well and then I would have had to sing and I don't sing but I had to sing I had to play music so I had to have a certain grade in music I had grade five in piano playing Wow. But it's not that case anymore, it's just an exam now, right? Oh, right now it's based on the Leaving Cert points. Right. So right now uh, students have to get a certain amount of points and the points for education you know, are, are quite high in this country for mm -hmm. the, the straight up degree. Um, there are other avenues where you can uh, get into, if you like, teaching. Uh, so somebody with a basic degree so you're, you know, you're gone from second level, you're gone to third level, you've got a, a degree that's, it needs to be relevant. They, there's a college called Hibernia College and they offer a master's degree then in education. Now I actually, you know, wouldn't, that, that's relatively new in this country, that teachers get into teaching through that. But their process is quite rigorous as well. And again, you have to have a degree to get into that course. Mm -hmm. So your basic Bachelor of Education is what I would have had. Now, the other thing is in this country, there's been a huge trend in the last number of years for teachers to actually get a master's degree in education. So I would have gone back to, it's actually Maynooth College, and while working as a, a, a teaching principal, I uh, engaged in a master's degree in uh, education leadership. And a lot of teachers, do they get more money? or is there... You don't get any more money for that. So there's no... There was a time that you did, maybe 10, 15 years ago, but in the, you know recent times, right. you don't get any extra money for so that. So that's, that's probably the major incentive that teachers in the U.S. get their master's. If there's a substantial increase on the pay scale. Yeah, not here. No. So then, probably not that many teachers doing it. 
here? Yes, yeah. quite a few do. In so fact, the, re the main reason I did my master's was because I sit on what, uh, selection panels. Right. So I would be uh, called in, you know, I'd be on a list and I'd be called in by another principal to sit on a selection panel for interviewing people for teaching jobs and for principalships. But you're an administrator. What about the regular teachers? Are they getting masters? Or? Yes. Why? Because they feel that it will, um, they, well, for various reasons. I mean, I'm not. I, I no, I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm, I'm playing the devil's advocate, okay, but I'm, okay. I'm just trying generally to generally speaking, they do it because they feel that they will be more likely to get a job if they have their masters. Because oh, you mean from the the teaching college go out as a masters? That yes, would be more. Yes, that's what they're doing from the through Hibernia. Oh. Yeah. And then when you are a teacher. The majority of teachers that do a master's would be interested in a leadership and management role, mm. not necessarily the principalship. Right. They, there are various grades. So you have assistant principals, you have deputy principals, you have assistant principal twos now in schools. Mm -hmm. And in order to maybe in larger schools to get that sort of position, you would need to have a little bit extra in your bag for education. Just FYI, in the U.S. system, if you were a new teacher and you had a master's degree, you would be putting yourself at a severe, um, a, you would be penalizing yourself to try to find a job because you would be considered too much to pay on yeah. me. Yeah, see, there, there's no difference, <laughs> there's no difference here in, you don't get paid any extra for it. Right. So it doesn't make any difference. Very interesting. So right now, there is it more difficult to be a primary teacher or a secondary level primary. teacher? Primary. And why is that, do you think? Uh, it's, it's still a job that people consider to be quite prestigious in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. I recently heard on the news that eight, the college uh, applicants, the CEO form has recently gone in and it was up 8% people looking uh, for uh, teacher training. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously still considered a very good job to have. Uh, I'm going to ask you the same question that I just asked him a minute ago. So if you were a principal and you worked in a system that regularly brought in 50% of its, its people that were in, 50% of the teachers come from the bottom 25% cohort, how do you think that would affect your quality and the things you could do? I'd have concerns, I would have concerns about that because, uh, you know, uh, education, you know, it's not all about knowledge, okay, it's not about how you know, but you do need a certain set of skills, you do need a certain set of abilities to be a, an effective teacher. Mm -hmm. And like everything else, teaching and education and how children learn, that's constantly evolving mm -hmm. and therefore a teacher needs to have the capacity to actually take that sort of evolution on board mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, and you see that in Ireland, you right. know, you see that where teachers adapt, it's one of the things that the t education system in Ireland seems to be most you know known for if you like that teachers have adapted and they've adapted to new methods and they've adapted to new and and the reasoning behind those methods and how to incorporate them into what you know what's best for the children in front of them so in order to be able to you know develop and adapt and take on new processes like that or take on new you know educational pieces like that you would need to have a certain capacity education right you know to build this system in did the ministry go out and look at a lot of other, or do they continue to look at other systems? Yes, they do. They continue so that's to look at, very I would important. be involved, through my work here, I'm involved with the NCCA, the National uh, Council for uh, Curriculum Assessment, and they are constantly looking at what's going on in Finland, what's going on in Scotland, what's going on. All do they the actually places. send people out there? Yes, they do, and they recently had a conference where they brought people in, and they got people to contribute to a book and to you know to look at the various like say mindfulness is something that's coming through strongly in this country at the moment and they had people from different parts of the world looking at that and coming in here and talking to me do you know many administrators that have been have visited other country systems i, I know of some uh -huh. but are very busy people right right i understand <laughs> it's really at that higher level you saw the kind of the development of the curriculum level that they seem to send people out mm -hmm. and then what happens is I know a lot of the people who are developing the curriculum are people who have were actual practitioners. They were 
they are, like myself, on secondment to the NCCA. They are teachers with, you know, specific skills. I mean, a lot of them have PhDs, much less, you know, they have their doctorates, much less their masters. And they're now working on research and, you know, looking at different systems and what needs to be developed in our own country. Mm -hmm. by, the, by the way, just for a small point, Irish PhDs tend to be about four years younger than their international counterparts. It's just a factor of how young the population is. Well, you see, is. education is really highly valued in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, I, br I was brought up by uh, parents who, neither of which had degrees, but they were, insist they were determined that myself and my two brothers were all going to have a third level education. Mm. I know that's what I want for my children. I know that that's what my friends want for their children. We all want our children to be well educated. There's that old saying where it's, it's, no, it's no harm to be able to fall back on it. You know, mm -hmm. so education is, has huge value in this country. Mm -hmm. Parents are very involved in the education system in this country because there's such value right. attached to it. With your, what was I going to say? Um, at your school, is it is it kind of middle, upper middle, low socioeconomic? Well, that's the beauty of this country. It's you know you can have a mixture. Like obviously, there are certain schools particularly in urban areas where you mm -hmm. would have, we have what are called DESH schools, or they're disadvantaged, considered DESH disadvantaged. level schools. one and two. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah, and so they're given extra resources and extra teachers sure. and everything to kind of deal with that. Where I work is a small rural school, if you like. So we only have in the region of around 100 pupils in our primary school. Mm -hmm. And we would have uh, myself and three other mainstream class teachers, and then we would have learning support teachers along with that, you know, depending on the needs of the school mm -hmm. so I mean the children that I work with we have a beautiful school mm -hmm. it was built in 87 very well maintained mm -hmm. but it's in the countryside and the parents come from various different levels okay is your school test is there a, a test every year that where the kids have to take to see how your school ranks against others N uh, well not so much how it ranks against others we have what are called the their maths tests and their English tests mm -hmm. that we give our children. Now there are lots of different tests depending on what we want to find out. So if I think a child has a difficulty, but I can more of a them. state. There state is one. yeah. The state have uh, the, what we call our standardized tests. Okay. And uh, so at uh, second, uh, fourth, and sixth class. So basically. Uh, three times within that eight year cycle that we have in primary school the children will sit an English test and a maths test and those results are fed back to the Department of Education.